Good evening, I'm Bo Williams, and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories happening right now. Topping the list for us once again. Yeah, the new year is just three days away, and that also means we're one day closer to the Vols showdown with Iowa in Orlando. The two set to square off on New Year's Day in the Citrus Bowl. Six sports team, you know, they've been in Orlando for us, getting us ready all week long. Forces were counting down to kickoff. Reese Van Haften, Sam Rothman, they got coats on, so maybe there's a little chilly tonight in Orlando. I don't know. Let's check in with them now to get more on the Vols prep. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't talk about how cold we are right now because of the snow. We, we heard it snowing back in Knoxville. <laughs> but it, it's pretty chilly out here out at Camping World Stadium. Now, it's another day in Orlando for us and another day where most of the talk was about Nico Yamaleava. We heard from both coordinators mm -hmm. for both teams, and there were a lot of things said about Nico. But the biggest thing that Joey Halsley, offensive coordinator for the Vols, said was that this is not a tune-up game for Nico. He has to be prepared. He has to be ready and put on a show. I'm sure Vol fans want to see that. Yeah, Joey Halsley, though, he made sure to talk about Nico's predecessor in Joe Milton. He thanked him for everything he gave to the program. He said he embodies what a true VFL is. He thanked him for helping Nico all throughout as he makes this journey from the backup to the starter. But a lot more young guys we're going to see take the field on Monday, too, Reese. A lot of young guys <laughs> on the defensive side as well, but also in the running back room. Jabari Small announced today that he is declaring for the NFL draft. It will not be playing in the Citrus Bowl. We already knew he wasn't going to play, mm -hmm. but now it's confirmed from the man himself. And then on the defensive side, there's going to be a lot of young guys playing there. We'll send it out to Casey, who's at Top Golf <laughs> in Orlando. Why are you there, Casey? <laughs> Hey, thanks, guys. Before I tell you why I am here, it may look like it's a little less chilly over here, but my mother got me this for Christmas. I wanted to wear it. Didn't want to cover it up with a coat, but don't be fooled. Anyways, over here, top golf for the Vols. Most of them have already made their way out, but they got a chance to have a little fun tonight. And like you said, the defensive guys who talked today, defensive coordinator Tim Banks, as well as linebacker Aaron Beasley. On the defensive side, biggest topic of conversation is the secondary after the Vols lost seven guys from their DB room to the transfer portal. The word that Banks used to describe the unit right now is opportunity 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 for these young guys to really make an impact on the field Tennessee has all the confidence in the world for them to do so for Beasley this is his last game in orange and white wrapping up a five-year career on Rocky Top the word that they've used to describe him not just today not just this week but all season long has been a leader and the way that he shows that out on the field is making sure that communication is strong as well as making sure that everyone's on the same page before the snap we're gonna wrap it up in Orlando but we're gonna have more coverage for you tonight at 11 from me, Sam, Reese, Dom as well. You got a fun interview. We're going to put that on the news and I'm going to wrap it up here from Orlando Top Golf. Reporting here in Orlando, I'm Casey K. Back to you. All right, Casey, thank you very much. We'll be checking back in with the crew coming up tonight at 11 o'clock. And again, don't forget, we're counting down to kick off between the Vols and Hawkeyes starting at 10 a.m. on game day. We'll be taking a look at the Vols Road to the Citrus Bowl. Game, as you know, in Orlando at Camping World Stadium. So if you're not making the trip south, you can just stay in the comfort of your own home and watch the game right here on WATE kickoff set for 1 o'clock. Next on our Big 7 and 7 for you tonight, a new law set to start Monday. It will give harsher punishment to those caught looking at their phones while driving. The Eddie Conrad Act is named after a Middle Tennessee man who was killed in a crash by a distracted driver back in 2020. It would increase the number of points that can be charged to a person's driving record if caught texting or even just looking at their phone even suspending licenses for people under the age of 18. This directly influences the problem that organizations across Knoxville are now trying to solve. Even though sending a text or looking at your phone to change the music might not seem like a big thing to do, at 55 miles per hour, sending a text takes an average of five seconds, and that's traveling the length of a football field, effectively not looking at the road or not being aware of your surroundings, which can put you in some really dangerous circumstances and can also create really dangerous situations for other people using the roadways. Knoxville Police, City of Knoxville, and nonprofit Bike Walk Knoxville applaud the new law, hoping it brings awareness to how a simple mistake can turn deadly. We're on your side with an update to a boating accident as our Big Seven list continues for you tonight. A Knoxville man has now been indicted on felony charges for a summer boat collision that injured four children. 48 year old Scott Reasonover has been indicted for several charges, including boating under the influence and felony vehicular assault. His arraignment will be in Loudoun County, and his bond is set at $15,000. The accident 
Happened back on July 13th. Four children were injured out on Teleco Lake when a boat hit them while they were being pulled on an inner tube. Three of the four children were taken to UT Medical Center with serious injuries. A fourth was critically injured and taken to a hospital for specialized treatment. Remember the life of a first responder is our next Big 7 at 7 for you tonight. The Seymour Volunteer Fire Department is mourning the loss of a longtime member. Gary Pryor passed away Wednesday after a battle with cancer. He was 66. He served with the fire department for nearly 40 years, working his way up to assistant chief before retiring and then taking on several different positions on the uh, department board. Most recently, he served as the board chairman for five years. Chief John Linsenberger says he was instrumental in obtaining new vehicles for the department. He was very active in our fleet. That's why this, this Tahoe in the middle was the latest uh, acquiring um, from Gary and, and others. But yeah, that was kind of his last hurrah to get it um, because we use a lot of support vehicles. So we've, we've, we'll be placing that one in service in his memory. As you just heard from Chief Linson Bigler, part of Pryor's involvement was acquiring support vehicles. The Tahoe that you see will make its debut in the procession ahead of Pryor's funeral, which is taking place at Ashley Seymour Chapel tomorrow at 1 o'clock. An emergency landing by a helicopter makes our next Big 7 at 7. A lot of you are talking about this. The helicopter was forced to make an emergency landing in Blunt County yesterday afternoon. As a matter of fact, according to a statement from the FAA, a Bell 206 helicopter was forced to land in a field near Wallen. This was around 2.40 p.m. after the pilot reported engine issues. Six people were on board. No injuries were reported. However, the tail of the helicopter was snapped off during the landing. The Blount County Sheriff's Office also says they received a report of the crash last night, but add they were not notified at the time of the incident and were not made aware of it until several hours after the crash had occurred. The FAA, by the way, is now investigating. Our next Big 7 at 7 is an action plan to help improve the Tennessee River. You know, we're just a few weeks out from the 113th General Assembly reconvening in our state's capital, and local state Senator Richard Briggs tells us he's filing several bills ahead of the session. And one of those bills aims to create a task force for the Tennessee River. Their job would be to look at the trash and plastic pollution in the river and see how it can be fixed. Briggs tells us the Tennessee River is one of the most biodiverse rivers in the world, which highlights the importance of keeping it clean. The Tennessee River is the most microplastics polluted river uh, in, in the world. Uh, there's been articles in the New York Times, National Geographic. Uh, there's been a lot of attention nationally to this problem, but uh, I don't think that it has really caught the attention of, uh, you know, of those of us that live in Tennessee. State lawmakers head back to Nashville for the new session on January 9th. Final Big 7 to 7 is our cooler temperatures outside. This time of year, you know we're expected to get colder, right? Chief Meteorologist Ken Weathers joins us now from the Six Storm Center to kind of walk us through just how chilly it will be this evening. Hey, Ken. Hey, Bo. Temperatures continue to drop through the 40s. Uh, we were only in the low 40s for high temperatures today in the Knoxville area. We're sitting at 41 right now, at least in downtown Knoxville. 39 degrees in Maryville. And there has been kind of that uh, light drizzle, a few flurries across the area. Right now, most of that's to the north and east. The light blue is the drizzle. The purple you see, those are the flurries up through southeast Kentucky, southwest Virginia. On and off opportunities really as we go through the night. Temperatures will fall below freezing for many areas. Upper 20s for the plateau. Also right along the Tennessee-Kentucky border. About 34 in Dandridge and 33 in Alcoa. Biggest concern would be even if we had some light snow in some spots. These are road surface temperatures by about daybreak tomorrow morning. So portions of Cumberland County along the Harlan County, Kentucky, Lee County, Virginia borders. And especially in the Smokies. Again, 441 close because of that opportunity later tonight. And that's where the best snow chances will be in the higher elevations of the Smokies. Tomorrow, all the snow's gone by midday, at least the opportunities for it. Temperatures chilly, mid-30s for wind chill values. Talk more about what's in store for our next system heading our way in just a minute, Bo. All right, Ken, thank you. And as Ken was just mentioning, we're on your side tonight with a traffic alert due to the weather up in the Smokies. As a matter of fact, few roads have been temporarily closed, as you heard. New section of the Foothills Parkway West is now closed, as is U.S. Highway 441 or Newfound Gap Road, which runs from Gatlinburg to Cherokee, North Carolina. Also, Laurel Creek Road has now been closed. That went into effect just a few moments ago at 7 o'clock. We will update you, of course, when those roads reopen.